Good morning. Welcome to another edition of PT on Ice. My name is Jason London. I'm a full faculty for both rehabilitation of the injured runner as well as rehabilitation of the injured cyclist. And I'm excited today to have with me Dr. Megan Peach, who is a board certified orthopedic clinical specialist as well as a certified strength and conditioning coach and adjunct faculty with Montana State University. Megan works with me here at Excel Physical Therapy in Bozeman and is an awesome TA for the Rehabilitation of the Injured Runner course. We're going to be in Evans, Georgia at Peak Rehabilitation tomorrow. Uh, I think there's still some spots available, so if you're interested in seeing us in person, we'd love to have you and we can see you tomorrow. But I'm going to hand it over here to Megan to talk about shoes. So today we're going to be talking about running shoe anatomy and you see I have lots of different styles of running shoes. Um, I'm not partial to any specific style of running shoe. These are just the examples I have today. So we're going to be talking about um, both the outer and the inner anatomy of a running shoe. Um, and not necessarily talking about the different styles of, styles of shoes like a maximalist versus a minimalist versus a motion control or a traditional shoe. Um, we're just talking about the anatomy that goes into all of the shoes. Um, so just choosing one of these. Um, so starting with um, some of the common terms you might hear in a running shoe, we have a uh, forefoot, a midfoot, and then also a rear foot. And so these are important to um, for us to try to determine how somebody is striking the ground when they're running. So the forefoot is going to be uh, the, um, the upper third of the running shoe, the midfoot is going to be the middle third, and then the rear foot is this last third of the running shoe. We also have the toe box. So the toe box is this part of the shoe. It's where the toes can wiggle around in the shoe. It's gonna look different depending on the shoe. The Vibram obviously separates the toes. Um, the Ultras have a little bit wider toe box. Um, and then some of the other types of shoes have maybe a little bit more narrow toe box. Uh, next we have the heel counter. So the heel counter in a running shoe is um, is this part of the heel. It's like the cuff of the heel and you can see in some of these shoes that I split um, the heel counter is actually a piece of very dense foam or plastic within the shoe so you can see it right here in this split shoe. Uh, you can also see the heel counter here so it's just a different material within the heel. The purpose of the heel counter is to um, offer support and maybe a little bit of rear foot control um, when somebody is using the shoe. Uh, let's see, we also have um, the, the last. So the last is just another word for um, what that shoe is uh, looks like and, and what the shape of that shoe is. And so um, these are all gonna look very similar. So. This is just the shape of the shoe. This is the last of the shoe. Um, and this is a little bit more um, flat or straight than, you see some curvature here um, in this shoe. Uh, slightly different last, so there's a little bit more curvature here in the shoe. Um, so the last is gonna look a little bit different um, in different types of shoes. And then we, um, so those are, those are kind of the outer aspects of the shoe. Um, and then we have the sole of the shoe. And so the sole of the shoe, let me get this one, is really made up of three different parts. So it's made up of an outsole, an upper, and then a midsole. Um, let's, let's talk about the upper first. So this is the upper. Um, it's part of the sole, it's part of the outer makeup of the sole. Um, it's really just made of fabric. Um, although sometimes we see kind of fancy things on the upper, like we see um, a difference in the types of fabrics used, um, some of a little bit more sturdy fabric for reinforcement for the laces, but ultimately it really is just fabric. And if we take a shoe that's been cut, you can see that it's really just a piece of fabric that's really making up that upper. Um, sometimes they'll have a little bit more cushion around the heel collar, um, but the upper is really just a way to secure the foot to the midsole and the outer sole. So the outer sole is 
the bottom of the shoe. This is the outer sole here. Um, it's typically made of some kind of rubber material and um, it's there for protection for the foot um, against the ground, against pavement, against rocks. Um, it is also there to give some a, a little bit of traction. And so you can see in a trail shoe, the trail is gonna have um, a lot more tread on the outer sole versus a road shoe is going to have much less tread. It's gonna be a lot more smooth. So you can see in some of these cut shoes, the outer sole is just this black part where it's attached um, to this midsole. You can see how the outer sole kind of comes up and wraps around the toe for protection. Here's another example of the outer sole on the bottom of the shoe. So the outer is sole is just this really thin piece of rubber that lines the very bottom of the shoe. And then we get to the midsole. So the midsole is between the outer sole and what's on the inside of the shoe. So most of our running shoes are going to have some um, insert that's removable. Um, and so our midsole is going to be in between that outer sole and the removable part um, of the inside of the shoe. Um, and the midsole is going to be basically made up of a couple of different types of foam. Um, the most common types are called EVA and polyurethane. And these are just different densities of foam that make up this midsole. You can see in this particular midsole, it's, it's made up of just one type of foam and the different density is going to lend itself to different properties within the shoe. So um, higher density foam may offer a little bit more um, control, uh, motion control, a lower density or cushy foam may offer more um, cushion and support um, shock absorption for that individual. And so, but often they're made up of a couple of different types of um, midsole foam. So you can see a couple of different types of foam here in this white part of the midsole and then the black part of the midsole is a different type as well. Um, we also see different components in the midsole. So this one in particular has some gel um, as part of the heel and then there was actually a little piece in the forefoot as well that's kind of out here. But um, so it, within this midsole is a little bit of gel as a different component. Um, this particular midsole, um, so these are the Nike Pegasus, and these actually have some air pockets here. So there's a little piece of plastic surrounding an air pocket. They fill that air pocket with gas, um, and that helps to cushion and support and control some of the motion of the foot um, when someone is running. So that is embedded within the midsole of that particular shoe. Um, so lots of different components, um, anything from air to gel to springs can go into the midsole to um, try to manipulate the different components of control and uh, motion control and stability and cushion within that shoe. Um, you may see, um, so this is a good example of how in that midsole we have different densities and different components to um, either add cushion, add support stability, or motion control to the shoe. So um, these are different densities than this part of the midsole here. Um, you may also see different colors of midsole on the outside. Um, I thought I had a good example. So, This is a good example here. So in the rear foot um, for this particular shoe, we have um, different densities of midsole foam than um, the midsole foam that goes from the rear foot to the forefoot. Um, and that is, and this, this one goes from medial all the way around to lateral and adds to um, the motion control of this shoe. Um, so that may be um, also different components, maybe different densities of the EVA. It could be thermoplastics. It could be different types of plastic, um, different things to add or take away from the motion control. Um, <clears throat> and then, oh, one thing I forgot to add about the, um, let's do this one. So about the outer sole. So you'll often see um, this split in the um, outer 
sole of a shoe. You can see it in this one, and then you can also see it in this one where the rear foot is actually split. So our foot has motion that we need to go through in order to have a healthy foot and healthy lower extremity motion while we're running, and that motion is normal. Um, and so in theory, the split in this outer sole is to help um, help maximize that normal motion of the foot. And then we also see these splits along the width of the shoe. We see it in a shoe like this. Um, it also has some here in this ultra. So you see this um, split along the width. Um, and the whole purpose of that is to try to reinforce extension at, um, at that first metatarsal phalangeal joint. And so we want that shoe to extend here and not at the midfoot like this. If we're getting extension at the midfoot, um, that's really not the purpose of the tiny bones and the tiny joints of the midfoot. And so um, that can really cause damage and cause wear and tear in the joints of the midfoot. And so we want to promote that um, forefoot extension here at the MTP joints. And so um, that's some of the purpose of these width splits in the outer sole. Um, so these, these two particular shoes are um, more of a minimalist shoe. So the Virums, obviously, they only have the um, outsole and then they have the upper. They don't have a midsole, they don't have any cushion, they don't have any motion control to them because that midsole um, component is not there. And then same, um, with these New Balance, so they have um, a little bit more tread on their outsole, and then um, if we had split this in half, there would not be any midsole cushion. Um, there would just be the outsole and then the upper to attach the foot to the shoe. Um, and then the last part of the shoe anatomy that I wanted to talk about was this one. So um, this part, just take this one. So this is, um, this is part of the medial longitudinal arch if we're looking at the foot. Um, this is called the shank. So the shank of the shoe is there to prevent this um, midfoot torsion or rotation when somebody's running. We don't want a lot of torsional stress through the midfoot because that's also going to cause breakdown and wear and tear in some of those smaller joints and then therefore muscles con trying to control some of those smaller joints. And so often um, they will add a shank in the um, right at the medial longitudinal arch. And this is just a, um, it can be a piece of plastic, it can be a piece of foam that's a little bit higher density to try and control that motion. Um, so I think that's the only one that has a really good example of that shank. Um, so that's it for shoe anatomy. So um, we will continue our conversation in Georgia on um, different types of shoes and I like to use the shoe anatomy to try to define um, a minimalist versus a traditional versus a maximalist shoe and so we'll use some of these terms to try to help define those so that we can talk about um, how we can hopefully help our patients um, choose shoes and kind of guide them in the right direction. Thanks so much. Great. Thanks, Megan. Um, so once again, it just kind of shows you all the R&D that's gone into footwear development for runners. And obviously there's a whole spectrum of different types of shoes and that really can alter your biomechanics with running. Uh, as we've seen with the research that's available to date, it really doesn't change overall injury rates, but what it does do is change the distribution of, of injury. So uh, we can uh, discuss this more again in a course. Uh, we're going to be t in uh, Georgia tomorrow at Peak Rehabilitation. Uh, you can join us there or at a future course. Uh, otherwise, other ways to get uh, more information too is signing up for the Hump Day Hustle through PT on Ice where uh, you'll get the most relevant research papers for the week uh, in PT or signing up for Virtual Ice where we have virtual lectures uh, once a week. Uh, and I'll be presenting on ski and snowboard injuries and their rehabilitation uh, in December. So have a great Friday and thanks for listening. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. 
If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.